Now, to help us understand the state of the economy today, uh, we have Paul Wafula, who is a writer at the Standard Paper. Thank you so much for joining us, Paul. Thank you, Joe. It's quite a lot happening in the country today. Yep. And I guess we'll start with the last one on the doctor's strike. Um, today, they were meant to go to court as well and see what their jail sentences are uh, and whether or not they're going to be paying up fines. But we all know that this is one of the most serious uh, industrial actions that we have seen in quite some time. Uh, uh, Joy, it's unfortunate that we find ourselves in this kind of a situation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you look at it, uh, honestly, we, we should not even be here. Uh, because you'll, you'll expect that uh, the life of Kenyans comes right on top of any other thing. Uh, you didn't even hear any special sitting that was called by parliament because doctors are on strike, because right. those are the poor Kenyans who will be using the public facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, here we are having a lot of noise over... over, over Electoral laws. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that is just self-interest, because mm -hmm. these are, these are about themselves, self-preservation, come next year. Uh, so the real issues that really face Kenyans, you find that we do not really take them seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, how long did it even take for the president to pronounce himself on the matter of the doctor's strike? You'll expect that once doctors make uh, their demands known that they're going to go on strike, that you'll find the Ministry of, of Health swinging into action. Mm -hmm. I mean, give it to them, they have done some, some work on it, and some of the doctor's demands are also a bit outrageous, you must say. But uh, at the end of the day, if doctors will feel like the government is listening to them in good time, we'll not have this kind of a crisis. Yeah. Right, we'll not have this kind of crisis. But then again, and actually I agree with you, just like you mentioned, you know, we did see them sit in Parliament or in the National Assembly for the entire day. And they were talking about election laws. And now when it comes to issues to do with the doctor's strike, you know, they're not really paying much attention to this. And yet this is something that is affecting the entire country as we speak. But then... Um, from your perspective, this collective bargaining agreement, yesterday we spoke to Dr. Masi Karir, who actually mentioned that there's been a change in authority that has seen uh, their demands actually being dragged along the way. And it's now about three years since they actually came up with these conditions, and yet nothing has been done about this. The nurses have returned to work, their conditions have been met, and while they were different from the doctors, it looks like um, there are always issues around collective bargaining agreements and uh, whether or not these conditions are agreed upon by different people in authority, that is something that actually is a story for another day. But do you think that the doctors are also being um, negative on the side of not really wanting to even say, you know, 90% of the conditions have been agreed upon, and so the 10% will be agreed upon in the future. Uh, I think um, uh, what tipped doctors here was the issue uh, after Sarah Sarem came up with mm -hmm. her, her, her job grading system yeah. and after the evaluation exercise. Of course, it put doctors way ahead of other civil servants, as you'll expect, and rightly so. Uh, but I think they realize that they're going to lock themselves in there. If they don't uh, make noise right now and get however much they can out of the system, it will be impossible for them to, to circumvent the system. And then you also have to realize that if, if you had workers in the health sector working as a block, they will have to achieve a lot more. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at nurses uh, negotiating on the side, if they get what, 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 what they think is right, they move away. Doctors want to do it on their own. Now, this is what puts them, I mean, uh, at a weak position. But if all, of, all, all, the, all the workers, would, uh, health workers, will come together as a block and make their demands known to the government, then at that point, you'll have this government really, or any other government, listen to their issues. But remember, uh, usually what happens, this uh, collecting bargaining argument, sometimes, I mean, as government, you just want these guys to come back to, 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 to work. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, you end up signing something on a promise of the future. And uh, it always happens, uh, unfortunately, near an election. Like now, we are going into an election. I wouldn't think, take very seriously an argument yeah. that is signed today because it's a matter of them going to work. When the next government comes in, unfortunately, they'll have to look, is it sustainable? Does it make sense? Then they'll come back to the drawing board. And it will take a while before they, they do that. Now, remember when we were making the constitution, teachers were very adamant and yes. trying to, they refused any, any level of devolution. Mm -hmm. Doctors were actually uh, putting their heads in the sun. They didn't think this thing was important. Now that they, they are under county governments, even having a national doctor strike is very difficult to have because you are, you are actually an employee of the county government. So, uh, I mean, they've gotten some support. Today you have even private sector, uh, I mean, private hospitals joining, which is a really positive thing for them. Mm -hmm. But then on the other side, the people who suffer more uh, are the are the patients. But Joy, why I find this also very interesting is, is, is because you, you, you think about how Kenyans even react when you have a doctor strike and when you have a teacher strike. Uh, you find the entire nation when there's a teacher strike, everybody else kind of gets 
carried away and they have to do something when mm -hmm. teachers issue a strike. Right. But when it comes to doctors, you find people not so concerned about it. And, 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 and this, you can look but at it But why is from, this so? Yeah. Is it because when it comes to education, there are no other options that you're looking at that, you know, if, if my child doesn't go to school and then I can take them and, and homeschool them, you know, as opposed to when it comes to medical, if somebody actually gets sick, they have the option of either going over the counter and picking medication or taking their patients to a private uh, clinic or hospitals for that matter? Is it because there's an issue of having options when it comes to health and not with education? You, you would think like that, but yeah. practically speaking, this is life and yeah. this, is, uh, this is just school. I mean, mm -hmm. your child not being in school for one week, uh, there will be no problem. You can, you can extend the term, but if someone is sick, it's either life and death. So you will expect that actually a doctor's strike should be, be taken a lot dire. more seriously. Mm -hmm. But look, Joy, the system that we have in, in, in the country, doctors somehow, you see the, the general population lost I um, mean, some confidence in the public healthcare system for a while. So you find uh, on an average day, even, 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 even a, a, a mama in the village down there, if they are sick, the first place they will go to is that clinic more than uh, really going to the public health facility that is nearby. So you'll find that kind of, uh, uh, I mean, people trusting the, the private healthcare. Mm -hmm. If there's a strike in the public sector, people might not feel it entirely because at the end of the day, they are used to going to the, to the clinic or the private place and paying for it. So that is really the challenge because most of the time we find there are no drugs. Uh, in the past, we didn't have doctors in the same hospital and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So if really you, and then if you look at the school sector, you find that public schools are fairly strong. You find that most public schools, even at, at, at high school, secondary level, people will prefer to go to a public school than a private at a school. So with that kind of inverse, uh, I mean, explanation, you realize that at least in the, in, the, in the school sector, the public sector takes the bigger chunk, so there's a lot more feeling All than right. in the private um, sector. Let's yeah. move away from that a little and focus on this latest survey yeah. by Ipsos Sinovet that was released this week uh, that indicated that three out of four Kenyans are aware of the corruption vice in the country. And 75% uh, of them are aware that it is actually happening in the Jubilee administration. So despite the fact that we have all this knowledge about corruption, we don't don't seem to be pushing uh, for it to actually come down. And that actually begs the question on have we become so complacent with the vice that, you know, it's just the new normal that we are having in the country today? Uh, first, I must say that I don't agree so much with the pollsters nowadays. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, because... Uh, Is that because after Donald a, Trump? Of course, <laughs> and, and, and our own experiences in the yeah. country. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll say that, uh, because they tend to be what they're saying is what it's not. Uh, but having said that, um, I mean, if you look at it having it be it, uh, being a scientific uh, poll as it were, yeah. um, I find it very interesting, actually, that you find a place like Northeastern has more awareness and a place like Nyanza and Western where all these political rallies are always happening and people complaining about corruption. I, I, I'm shocked that Northeastern where it's relatively calm, um, people are actually more aware. Uh, but having said that, I think Kenyans uh, have gotten to a level whereby they, 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 can, they, 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 they are tolerating corruption. You see like even the appointment of, of, of Obukala to be the next boss at ESCC, uh, Kenyans are thinking, what are we going to do? Have we decided to pray for corruption? Have mm -hmm. we decided mm -hmm. uh, just to say, uh, I mean, what can I do, like the president will say. That's I actually think, something yeah. I wanted to yeah. touch on. Yeah. Now that we're having a churchman yeah. uh, being nominated to chair the EACC, yeah. are we finally seeing a green light, or do you think he's also being fixed? Uh, it's, it's, it's really, uh, um, I mean, if you look at it, um, there, are, there, there, there are two sides to it. Uh, personally, I do not, do not have a problem with the churchman being there, because at least he'll get in there with, with some level of integrity, and people will have a lot of respect. People are not attacking him for his integrity. Uh, people will attack him because he's probably very soft, or because he may not have the, the metal to be able to fight the corruption in terms of the political uh, uh, side to the corruption that we have in the country. Uh, but having said that also, so you'll, you'll realize that this is a very big test to the church right now. Mm -hmm. Because if, if Wabukala fails, then, uh, then this will be an opportunity for people to say even the church cannot be able to handle this issue. All right. So, yeah. So economically speaking, uh, you know, we have seen the predecessors. Yeah. Uh, we've seen uh, most of them actually being jinxed. And some people have said, you know, this is a, a very jinxed position, just like it is with the IABC chair uh, positions. But economically speaking, do you think that having a church leader head uh, the EACC is going to be good uh, for the country's economic progress? Um, I think 
because we have an office and, and these are, I mean, we have an institution called ESCC and somebody must be there. I think this is what we have. We are just trying to fill the place, uh, if, if you ask me, rather than looking at really what we need to do to fight corruption. Uh, because it does not matter who is at ESCC. We've, yeah. we've had the, the most vocal of people there. We've had the, the toughest of people. We've had people who, who themselves have issues, who can be able to fight, uh, I mean, who, who are seen to be actually very close to, to, to the people who are actually stealing themselves have been there at the ESCC. Uh, I mean, we have had more than 100 uh, uh, investigators now at the ESCC. Of course, I've been complaining about budgets that have always been cut when, 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 it, when, when it is convenient. Uh, but if you do not have the political will and if the government of the day is not really interested in fighting corruption, it does not matter how hard uh, ESCC works. Because these are just, uh, I mean, about 200 people in an office. What can they do between all the counties? Look at all the corruption that is happening there. What can they do at the political level? If you get any small, any big fish, you'll be told this one you cannot touch because it's Jubilee. This one you cannot touch because it's ODM. Mm -hmm. You can't touch because of the political inclination. So even by the time you detach corruption from political personalities, it's really a, a lot of work. But if you have a government that says, guys, you've stolen or you have been found culpable, we have nothing to do with it, and please carry on cross. If you have that kind of a situation, yeah. then uh, you make the work of the ESSC boss very easy to, to, to work with. All right. And let's also finally touch on the Fed rates. Uh, they were increased, actually, the, the U.S. Federal Reserve increased uh, the interest rates by 25 basis points. And I think this is the second hike in, in about a decade. Yeah. We've not seen this happen before. Um, what do you think could have led to them actually raising it, even by even if it's minimal, uh, being raised by 25 basis points. I think looking at what's happening in the global economy, you, mm -hmm. you, you will appreciate that uh, people have been getting out money out of the U.S. and elsewhere to invest in Africa and other developing markets because of the high returns. Uh, but now that we have a situation whereby, uh, I mean, the, the Fed has raised the rates a bit, there will be better returns back mm -hmm. home. I mean, yeah. the comparative, there will be uh, still negligible. But if someone is looking for a safe bet, then mm -hmm. they'll be like, okay, there's something happening back home. Let me put money here where I'm 99% or 100% sure than put it, it at a, in a risky economy. But I, th I think it's a, an issue just that's at the end of the day is going to make even the dollar stronger. You, you know what has happened in, in, in the UK? I mean, we looked at the euro, and the euro has actually been weakening in most in most parts of the world mm -hmm. because of the Brexit. Mm -hmm. uh, so you find if the dollar again appreciates and it becomes uh, uh, the king, as it were, on, 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 on the global scene, then you are safe as, 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 as a US. But this is going to have an implication on us on this other side because, I mean, are we going to be able to keep the, the investments that we had here? Are people going NSC? Are people going to take out money and take it back home? Are we going to see a reduction in terms of the, uh, I mean, the, the foreign earn earnings that we get in the mm -hmm. country? Mm -hmm. Then that, of course, will be able to weaken our, our, our financial position from, from right. the exchange Right. So it's no doubt that, you know, uh, the raising of the rates makes the United States more attractive. So we might see more investment going back to the United States um, because of the strengthening of its currency. Yeah. But then again, for emerging markets like Kenya and, uh, I guess, countries like Nigeria and South Africa, you know, uh, as opposed to Nigeria and South Africa that have been doing really badly, our currency has been among the best performing uh, across the African continent. So do you think that we are going to be directly affected by, by this? I think the central bank um, um, has taken really good measures. If you look at in terms of the import cover, we are now mm -hmm. more than 5.5 months of import cover. You look at um, uh, we have also benefited from the lower uh, oil prices. So, so it will really be minimal on us in terms of a direct impact. Mm -hmm. Of course, there will be some um, some losses uh, along the way, but I don't see a situation whereby we are going to to feel it as as hard as we would have felt it if if it was a situation whereby our currency was also suffering from issues of of, of imports uh, in terms of of the, the oil prices. But right now, with the lower oil prices, we find that our imports have actually gone down. And then remember, we have been able to diversify our sources of, of, of foreign earn earnings. And, and that is also helping us a lot. Uh, uh, so that if one market suffers, then you can be able to benefit from the other. But having said that, I mean, uh, this will take some while before the impact starts trickling home. And remember Trump's uh, main uh, idea of having uh, f uh, I mean, local US companies come back home, mm -hmm. that eventually, if that really goes through, then you'll, you'll realize that many companies, they return back to the U.S., then that will really be an impact to us. Yeah, a, a really huge point, impact. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Paul, we do appreciate the time taken. Is there anything to celebrate this Christmas? Uh, I think we, we will we'll see it and, and give Kenyans news uh, from wherever they will be for yeah. now.
and, and look at the fuel prices, look at how they're going to be able to celebrate shopping and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. because some of us have to be here to work. Well, yeah. kerosene has gone up, you yeah. know. Uh, diesel has gone up. It's only yeah. petrol that went down by about 74 cents. Yeah. Uh, this is actually not so good news for us as we begin the next year of 2017. Do you think there's going to be a spike continuously on fuel too? Of course. Uh, well, once you see, like, for instance, the travel uh, sector, mm -hmm. once you have a small increase in fuel, you know what yeah. that happens, and most of the buzz are using diesel anyway. So mm -hmm. you, 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 they will be able to use this. These are good excuse for them to say, they uh, are a panda, so we have to, you know. And right now, I mean, uh, uh, but we were able to look at what's happening even at the transport sector yesterday. Not yeah. many people are traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, probably people are waiting to travel last minute, which is maybe tomorrow. And then after that, then, you know, that, that expectation, even buses, uh, some companies are disappointed because we're expecting numbers of people to be moving around. So, and then you remember also there's something else that you have to realize that with the, with Matiangi's releasing of the results early, that means KCP, uh, I mean, next year from once are actually opening in, in January. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if, if you spend everything during Christmas, uh, you will find yourself not being able to afford fees come faster. All right. Yeah. We were actually asking uh, yesterday on our Twitter poll question what, what people had prioritized, rent and mortgage, school fees and tuition, and majority of them actually said both of them, you know, school fees and tuition as well as rent and mortgages. But thank you so much, Paul Wafula, writer at the Standard newspaper.